Craig Owen from Hawk Speed. Where and when exactly did your passion for cars begin? I took RC cars apart when you know they were broke because I didn't I didn't know why they were broke and I didn't figure it out. So that stuff's always been there. It's always uh, since day one. It's been a mechanical mind. So. Awesome, awesome. All right, what separates Hawk Speed and Customs from you know the run of the mill uh, shop in the area? Um, first thing we don't do any, there's no, it's not a general maintenance kind of shop, uh, you know, you're driving around in your Evo and I don't want to do brakes on your Evo. If you want to turn the wick up and make it a thousand horsepower monster, then, then we'll wear your shop. As far as um, general maintenance, we don't take care of any of that stuff. General maintenance on hot rods we do, on specialty cars we'll do. Um, one of my customers has a 2016 Z06 and that car makes lots and lots of power and so he doesn't take it to the dealership to have the oil change he brings it here because i was the one to turn the wick up on the car there's really not another shop in the area that does what we do so that's one of the biggest things there's lots of places that will fabricate stuff you know friends of ours uh, friends of the shop that, that does stuff for us that, that cuts things out on their CNC plasma machines or the power coat stuff or that cuts out brackets on their on their uh, lathes and vertical mills. Um, but as far as full on builds, those other shops don't take on that, that responsibility. Uh, there's lots and lots of guys that does, you know, custom cars in their house and their own personal their own personal shops. But there's not really a, a shop that goes full tilt in southern Arizona that does what we do. You also a veteran, correct? Yes, sir. Did a, did a couple of years in the military. So. Let me tell you why I support Hawk Speed. All right, number one, he's a veteran. All right. He's a guy that I can shake his hand and look in his eye and tell that he felt the same amount of pain and suffering I did when I left the old deploy a couple times. All right? He's a man with a dream, and I'm going to do everything in my power to support him during this dream. All right? So if you're in the Southern Arizona area, go check him out. Very industrial thing that it is that's sitting in the bay right now. Um, when I picked it up for the customer, it was, we, do you buy the two trucks and do you part them out? Because there was a lot of really, really good parts there, you know, big turbo and a lot of uh, bill of transmission parts. There was a lot of stuff there that, you know, would have gone back onto the market and helped somebody else out build their project or get their project started or finished or whatever. And the owner of the panel would have made some money on the deal. And uh, he was overseas uh, contracting for the government. and. Uh, making a little bit of extra money and, and he decided that he wanted to take on that, that project and that's that's really where it began and then how it's morphed into what it is today is based on things that, that the customer really really enjoys so he's an off-road truck kind of guy because I have another vehicle for him as well that we're building it's a 12 plus inch uh, travel um, 2006 Chevy 2500 HD that's getting a 900 horsepower LSA blown 408 stroker motor and then king shocks and it's going to be a solid axle front conversion and all that other stuff so that same customer is the same guy who owns the panel truck so when you look at the panel you're like why does it think got king shocks on it well that's the explanation for it because he's wrapped up in the off-road scene he really really enjoys the off-road scene it's part of where he lives in vegas and so that's part of his upbringing and what he's enjoyed you know for the last 35 40 years he's been alive um, and then diesel, because we both share that same passion about diesel. 12 valve Cummins is a, is a huge thing um, in multiple genres of the car scene. You know, you're seeing them in Cadillacs and lower Cadillacs today. You've got them in, there's a 66 Impala that just showed up here recently that has a 12 valve Cummins in it. Um, and so that truck's gonna make about 750 horse and about 1,500 foot pounds of torque. It's got a compound turbo that comes in it, so that's where that love for that comes from, it's because it's a shared thing between the customer and myself. Uh, the truck's lowered a little bit. It's got 14 inches of wheel travel on that truck. 
got air ride front and rear, it's got triple convoluted bags off of Kenworth on the rear. It's got four foot ladder bars on it. The ladder bars come from my racing. Um, it's that's another part of my life that's been there since day one, you know. Lots of people grew up watching you know, different car different cartoons, different uh, you know, the, the Cosby's or whatever TV show when I was a kid sitting there watching, you know, Big Daddy Don Garlic's breaking records. So racing's always been a big part of my life, especially drag racing, because I never did understand the whole looking for circles, you know. Uh, uh, excuse me. I never understood the uh, NASCAR's, you know, drive around circles, you know, turn left, turn left, turn left. It's just not, you know, I appreciate the, the engineering that goes into those cars, but it's just not who I am. So, um, so the panel really has morphed into, again, it's not a rat rod, and most people like to call it a rat rod because it's not. Um, it's very much an industrial piece that um, the whole point and the whole view, the whole thing going forward is that that truck is going to be indestructible because the roll cage that's in it, because the gussets that are tied in the roll cage to the body, the box frame, the suspension modifications that's taking place, it's wide stance. <laughs> it's it's a beautiful thing to stand behind that panel because it, it's just, it's low and wide when it's aired out. There's not another one like it. It's the only one on the planet. So, there's a... Uh, there's a lot of creative juices that's uh, been created because of that truck on how to get that 10 pounds of crap stuffed in that 5 pound bag because there just isn't enough room to do all the things that, that, that the customer wanted to do and the things that, that were a requirement for me. So when he does go out and stands on the throttle that he's going to live to tell about the story tomorrow and then he can tow his off-road truck with it or his boat or well, his house if he wants to, it doesn't matter. So, anyway. That's the panel. Okay, so uh, what do you have planned for the future of the shop? I mean, what do you see yourself in uh, five years? Um, so the whole military thing, you know, we, we were taught 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 meter, 500 meter mile targets, you know, that type of thing. And so um, the, our short range target right now is to build a bigger shop. I'd like to have employees, but the problem is, is that um, the employees that I want require a substantial amount of money, and I have to be able to bring clientele in that will support that employee, because that's what they, honestly, it's what they deserve. They're, those guys deserve the $25 an hour that they demand, because they're they're just badass fabricators, because they're badass welders, because they're, their minds are able to do the things that is required of them to put the wiring harness in. You know, one of the other customer cars that I have out there has got a smart harness in it from Infinity Box and it's um, completely different than the standard issue wiring harness that is in everybody else's cars. When you turn the switch on on my wife's van, it's 12 volts that go through the switch to turn on the lights. Um, in a Corvette, it's to ground. So to have guys in here to be able to do that, um, I need to be able to have a bigger footprint so when we blow cars apart there's places to put things, there's storage facilities to where you can catalog things where it needs to go. Um, so right now my short my short range target is to uh, to get the building built, to get concrete poured, to get HVAC put in and once it's turned on, you know, it's to, uh, to build a bigger shop because right now it's just small and there's no room to do anything. You can't, there's, there's no way that I should be able to have four cars in there right now for the amount of foot, for the amount of space that we've got. So, um, so 50 meter target is uh, is get another building, get some uh, get some concrete poured, and get some more real estate um, as far as shop and floor space goes, and then bring hopefully get some quality employees in here that can help turn stuff out in a timely manner um, because that's that's important to for for. A customer to bring me their cars, you know, to tell me that they want to build you know, a, the panel truck, the Corvette, um, to, to build a monster me out, it doesn't matter. For that customer to come to me, they want a timeline, and that timeline should be relatively um, feasible 
for the customer to understand that, you know, look, it's going to take me two and a half months to get this bill taken care of. Or in some cases, it's going to take me two years. It really just depends on what it is we're talking about. But I should be able to stick to that timeline. And to this, up to this point, um, I've, I've missed timelines. I've missed all these uh, uh, goals that I've set for myself to be able to get these cars in and out of here. And it's due to the real estate problem and due to the employee problem. And so uh, I need the I need to expand the shop and I need to get employees in here so we can continue to grow, so we can continue to, to meet my personal expectation of the shop. And so, you know, my personal goals for the shop is to be um, something that people recognize in Southern Arizona. And there's enough talent here locally that I think that we can put the shop on the map and we would be able to go and compete with the largest names of shops in, in all the, you know, the, the whole United States, not just local. Um, so that's, that's the plan is to uh, get to that point.